sector alone in the UK, you know, the small business sector is, is, you know, is one with, with over 5 million small businesses uh, employing over 16 million uh, people within the economy. So in incredibly important. And what a phenomenal panel to, to help us uh, navigate this topic. Uh, we've got Ilva, who's um, one of the co-founders and the COO at Simply. Hey. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and then we've got um, Eric, who's uh, co-founder, uh, one of the board directors now at, uh, at Bankable, having recently handed over the reins of the, of the CEO role. So welcome. Thank you. We've got Christoph, who's the, the CEO and, and founder of, of iWalka. Hey, Christoph. And, um, and Alexander, who's the uh, UK Managing Director of, of Funding Circle. Welcome. Thanks. So, so let me start with you, Ilva, if that's OK. I'd love to hear a bit more about the, the distribution model you guys are using at, at Simply, uh, because I know that's very important to, um, to how you are you know, kind of growing in the market. No, definitely. And um, thank you for that. Um, I think. Um, this topic is about the funding, uh, the gap in providing funding to SMEs, and that's very much been our starting point. Not so much in how we distribute our, our products, but more how SMEs get the funding they need. Uh, so starting very much with the customer. Uh, simply, uh, we launched Simply seven years ago, and we have a, kind of a split personality. So we are both a lender and a fintech. Um, and I'll explain a little bit more what I mean uh, with that. Um, so we set out to build a digital toolbox uh, for uh, SME lending. So that is um, all the different components that you need to do a successful distribution of funds to SMEs in the UK. And um, that's really important because it has to be tailored to the moment of interaction with that customer. We talk conveniently about SMEs as a nice acronym, but we're talking about such a variety of customers yeah. in that. So uh, all customers' uh, needs and profiles are very, very different. So recognizing that from start and having the ability to tailor to that moment mm -hmm. and to that individual is really important. Um, so. Um, the toolbox that we have built, we have deployed it for our own lending. So as a lender, we use it in maybe six or seven different ways, uh, depending on how you look at it. Um, we have built one version of it that is um, available to a company, a, a, um, an SME, who wants to walk into a truck dealership and then drive away from there in a new truck on finance. So it's deployed in that way. We've uh, built it in a way that our direct sales force, our sales reps, can go out, meet with the customer, have a cup of tea, talk about their business and, and their needs and requirements, and then tailor a financing package then and there at, at the kitchen table, uh, quite often with the uh, customers, and, um, and work it all out on an iPad. We've also set it up in a way where we give it to our brokers who want a personalized service to their customers or to our introducers who want it white labeled for, for their uh, sort of uh, end users. So many, many different ways. But to me, when we're talking about this funding gap, it's vast because there are a lot of businesses out there that want to grow and that should be empowered to grow with the availability of finance that maybe not are able to access it today. For them, I think the biggest use case of um, the digital two book box that we have built is in partnerships. And that's what I mean, we're a fintech. So we partner also with other lenders who want to access these customers, but don't particularly have the SME lending capabilities um, no. that takes all the core you know, compliance and regulatory sort of uh, requirements. And also, maybe not does it in, uh, maybe can't do it in a way that's tailored to that customer interaction. So the ability to really create the customer experience that allows the SME to get finance, but also to that um, makes it less um, burdensome. Fantastic. Uh, so it's the combination of all those distribution models that we are yeah. trying to sort of put out there to really bridge that gap. And you're obviously embedding real value in those distribution channels, which is, which is phenomenal. Well, yeah, yeah. yes. I mean, and, and it is, uh, again, that tailoring, that yeah. sort of making sure that it's bespoke to the interaction yeah. that we talk about. Fantastic. And, and Eric, I mean, really through the, um, the acquisition of Eric, I think you've, you've sort of supercharged your, your footprint into the, the SME lending um, kind of sector. And, and I know you're very focused on, on banks as, as potential partners and, and um, to clean the distribution space for, for your products. Can you talk a bit more about that and why, why do you see those banks as, <coughs> as an interesting channel? Well, so we're not a lender to mm. start with. So mm. we are, in fact, we, uh, with Arex, we, we believe that uh, we could merge 
strengthening of the service with credit. Yep. If you look at the universe today, there's a, you know, all the new, uh, all the, the first generation fintech, they're all on prepaid and debit. So I think there's an opportunity to transform part of it on credit. And with banks, I think they, what we do is we take commercial paper, we take, you know, VAT and whatever we can uh, access to, 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 to carve or to pro produce, in fact, a product for investors. So today the investors we work with are not necessarily banks, so we're talking to banks now, but they're more uh, hedge fund or people who are, who are after performance on the short term. So the only thing we work with is uh, working capital less than 60 days. Yeah? So payable, receivables, and from an investor standpoint, I think for the bank, they could, pro they could uh, build some products mm. for their wealth management uh, you know, a uh, group. Uh, so I think we, we, there's many, many angles to that, but uh, I think the, the key thing is to be able to, uh, to have a, a view on a group of uh, SMEs. We don't do things one by one, otherwise we'll be, uh, you know, uh, working uh, day and night. <laughs> so, uh, so I think we try to, um, in fact, regroup uh, SMEs, get a profile, and then we sell a performance uh, to, the, to the investor. Uh, and for the bank, I think it's all about technology. They, yeah. It's very difficult, I mean, to do a sh short-term lending. You need, a, you know, a, you need data or, you know, or, or technology that are not necessarily available at banks. So, and they leave a lot on the table. So that what we want to tell them is, you know, you should catch, grab more, not outsource that, keep it for you. Uh, and, uh, and then we, uh, we can do something with this product, either on the wealth management or with uh, the transaction bank. Super interesting, thank you. Mm. And, 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 uh, and Christoph, I mean, we were talking a bit earlier about the, the BBB data and, and, and the sort of annual report there we saw in, in the latest one, 20, the 2023 data, or alternative lenders actually surpassed the, um, the high street banks in volumes, which, which certainly surprised me. You know, someone who's been in the sector now, what, longer than IFGS, IFGS has been around longer than 10 years. You know, what, what, what else can you, could you tell us a bit about the, uh, the sector and how it's grown in, you know, in that time, how it's evolving? Yeah, I was just thinking about um, reading. It's the IFGS 10th edition. I've been probably at every single one, <laughs> which um, really makes me feel a bit like a dinosaur. Um, so big congratulations to Janine and the entire team for keeping it going and making it a bit better every, every year. So, so 10 years ago, we were nowhere uh, relative to where we are today as an, as an industry. And, um, and I remember having sat at panels, maybe even at this conference, where someone from a larger bank said, um, oh, all of this fintech stuff um, is not going to work anyway. You know, they've got all of this funding these last five years, but um, they haven't really made any dent. And I think now, you know, a few years later, you can really see how big the dent is that we, as an entire fintech industry, has, uh, have achieved regardless of um, which area of finance that concerns, and clearly also in financing to, to SMEs that I'm, and we are here all on this panel focused on, we um, have now more than 50% market share of um, SME financing and really filled the, um, the, the void that the banks have left um, over the last decade and you know, arguably um, the, the decades before, which is why we all started um, to, um, to see an opportunity and solve that challenge to help small businesses. And, um, and a big change you can see in some of the data that the British Business Bank is publishing is also visible. In the past, you roughly had about two-thirds of all small businesses saying that they're permanent non-borrowers with absolutely no interest in, um, in borrowing funds. That has really changed. Um, the ratio has really flipped um, that roughly about a third or so say that they are prominent non-borrowers. And I think that's also part um, of the work that we have done as uh, non-bank lenders um, to really speak to SMEs, to tell them about the benefits of financing and, and how they can use it to um, invest in their companies or smooth very stressful cash flow gaps that they might find. So yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a big decade. <laughs> um, and I think there's lots more that we can do. Tremendous, and, and look, nothing stands still for long in the in the small business segment. Alexander, I'd love to hear a bit from you, if that's okay. About how, you know how are you involving the product set to to, to kind of keep up with the the, the needs of SMEs in the uh, in the market? Yeah, so we've been around for 13, coming on 14 years now, principally a, a term loan business, and that's how we set up. But what we realised is that small businesses don't necessarily come thinking what I really want is a is a term loan or a working capital invoice finance. What they come is with a, with a need, with a cash need. 
And so what we've done is really evolved our product set from purely that, that term known focus, which remains the engine of the business. But we launched, for example, a line of credit product called FlexiPay uh, about a year and a half ago that quadrupled 2022 to 2023 and continues to, to grow quickly. We've introduced the card last year so that small businesses can actually kind of make payments, which uh, they can then use on the line of credit. Uh, we work in partnership with a number of other uh, lenders as well, because the key thing that we have is, is we want small businesses to get the funding they need to win. And if we can't provide it, then we feel we have a responsibility to find it for them. So we work through partners um, where perhaps our product doesn't quite work, or as I say, where, where we can't fund in order to refer businesses on. So it's all about kind of making, and this is where I think FinTech has a particular edge, using technology, using data, using the relationships that we build with small businesses and, and, and with customers in order to kind of find that solution and in order to work with each other to make sure we find the solution that works and we continue evolving our product set, we continue growing um, to meet those needs. Yeah, the, I mean, the sector is often yeah, very, very collaborative and I think it's one of its great strengths. And, and, and I think that, yeah, that data point is, is super interesting as well. I mean, Ilva, you, you see kind of heaps of data in, you know, in your business. What, you, where are the latest kind of dials on the dashboard pointing? And, and you know, what's that, what is that data telling you about the, the state of the market at the moment? Well, I think, uh, I mean, you probably don't need to look at a lot of data to tell that uh, it's quite tough to be an entrepreneur in the UK at the moment. Um, there's uh, all the concerns that have been building over the last couple of years with, with um, uh, cost of living and, and interest rates and all, all, all of that. Um, but what we found, and, and we, we hear this in the conversations we have with our customers, but also in the data and the research that we've done, is there's a huge amount of optimism and, and resilience amongst SMEs, which I find so inspiring. Um, I think uh, in the research we did, 80% felt optimistic about the future and 50% expected to grow. However, and this is, this is where the gap evolves, is um, uh, the, at the same time in the same sort of uh, pool of customers, only one third felt confident that if they did apply for a loan with a bank, that they would be approved. And you also see that then in other data points where um, SMEs are quite uh, in, the, in, the, in the recent sort of uh, nine months have uh, um, increased reliance on credit cards and overdrafts uh, to, to sort of fund this, this potential growth. And that's just not good enough. And um, so what we do see is an, an, an ambition, a, a drive, a force in the UK economy that could do with a bit more of um, support uh, that is done in a way that works for them. There's also a very strong link, and the, the opportunity is not just for the lenders and the SMEs themselves, but there's also a very strong link between um, uh, availability of finance to, to uh, businesses and investment in net zero, as an example, or innovation and productivity. So if for uh, the UK economy as a whole, we want to make sure that we make progress on the net zero commitments, and we do make progress in driving productivity and growth, um, then making sure that we um, uh, empower the SMEs, who are the ones that create jobs and growth in, in the economy, that they get what they need to be able to really uh, realize that potential of, of growth. So it, mixed, mixed picture, but yeah, I think yeah, overall yeah, I think. extremely impressive um, yeah. from an SME point of view. Yeah, I think we're all watching things super closely, and it, it feels, I mean, feels to me like a potential, you know, the beginning of an inflection point, but it's yeah. always, always tricky to call these things. I mean, Eric, you talked a bit about the, the, the long and the short term perspective, and, 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 and banks struggling to sometimes take, take that short term perspective. I wonder if you could just elaborate a little bit on, on what you meant there. Well, <clears throat> long term, anyway, we're all dead, right? <laughs> so no, I think uh, short term, I think short term is, uh, has been uh, ne neglected, I mm. think. And, uh, and that's the only thing we can uh, forecast now. In, mm. Who knows what's going to happen in uh, three, five years? You know, every day, every uh, morning, there's something completely uh, crazy. I think, uh, you know, uh, who, who would say that uh, a year ago that Credit Suisse will disappear uh, overnight? Mm. You know, uh, so I think... Uh, Forecasting the, the, the dismiss of Credit Suisse was uh, quite difficult, and that, uh, so long term is, um, I think, the, 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 the money is going to be. Uh, it's a flux business, mm. you know. So I think you've got a flux of your, your business. There's uh, ups and downs. You need a partner who can follow you and anticipate. Uh, and I think it's sort of a, 
it's the search for permanent capital, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's not the way uh, banks operate today. It's product, this, yeah. that, silo. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so I think it's uh, quite important to, um, to help. I think whoever, whatever, whoever wants to uh, provide uh, lending to the DSME with, uh, mm -hmm. with the tools to, to, to make sure we can uh, redefine the economy. Fantastic. I mean, Christoph, in, in, in that change you articulated over the, uh, over the last decade or so, in, w in which firms like yours have, you know, have really taken significant market share, uh, I'm really interested in the, 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 um, the distribution models you guys have used. I mean, you were, you were a first mover on you, you know, an API solution to market, and, and I think there's a really interesting development that helped probably embed your, your product you know, th throughout the, the journeys of others. Could you talk a bit more about how, you know, how have you used that, that kind of API-driven strategy to really um, kind of take market share? Sure. Well, first of all, like many, many years ago, I coined the North Star for us that um, getting an SME launch would be just as simple as booking a flight ticket. Mm. And, um, and we got there. So, you know, fastest ever transaction that we have done from starts to money credited in a bank account is one minute, 37 seconds. You know, you only achieve that if everything is fully automated end-to-end, -end, including mm -hmm. um, a KYC and AML checks. In this example, that was through one of our strategic partners using our API. And, um, and now we got about 30, 40% of all of our customers come through our APIs with about 30 partners uh, across the regions, UK and Germany, that we're operating in. And, um, and it really just makes it very simple for a business to um, submit data to us and get a real-time credit decision back in the many cases that they can um, even take on and immediately draw down from. And I think that ease and um, reduction of friction has, um, has really helped us to get um, to the market share that, that we have today. Fantastic, thank you. And, and, we, and we were hearing just a minute ago, Alexander, about the BBB and, and their role in, you know, in supporting the, um, the small business funding and the, uh, you know, closing the funding gap. Can you talk a bit about the, the role you're seeing government play in, um, you know, in, in supporting the sector and, and, and the role that Funding Circle has in, in helping distribute you know, some of that, um, that, that capability? Yeah, I mean, hugely important. And it was, it was interesting li uh, listening to uh, BIM yesterday talking about the, you know, the support for open finance, support for open banking. We work very closely with the BBB actually since before the pandemic. Uh, and we've worked with them through the, the government lending schemes, Sybils, um, uh, RLS, it's, it's three iterations. And I think the role they have played in terms of enabling that um, lending to come into the small business you know, uh, community, which is, uh, we talked about, it's 99% of, of the UK, is hugely important. Mm -hmm. And it's really kind of enabled, you know, we're a platform, so we, we principally don't lend our own money, except for in certain areas of development. So investors need confidence, and certainly in some of the period that we went through the COVID schemes, and now as we emerge from those, uh, the lending programs that the BBC has helped facilitate have been, have been hugely important to enable that flow, which ultimately is why we're here to get to SMEs, to help build the economy uh, and support them uh, for their growth. So uh, we remain hugely supportive and obviously we watch uh, government very closely um, uh, for continued uh, support for the sector. Fantastic, thank you. I mean, we're in the, in the closing few seconds, I guess for me, yeah, it's a su super interesting discussion. So thank you guys, you know, you guys are innovating at a product level, but also really changing uh, the, the way that, um, you know, the product is distributed, bringing real value into those distribution channels you know, showing how powerfully the API can be used as a, as a route to market, you know, thinking about, you know, new funding models in, in, in the short term, um, you know, developing the product set to, to really meet those rapidly changing needs of SMEs. So really interesting discussion. Do please join me in thanking the panel for, for the session. Thank you all so much. Well, that's